from our epistle today. God is faithful, and God will not let, not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, God will also provide the way out, so you may be able to endure it. This line is uh, one of those famous quotes, I, one of the quotes um, used that I, uh, always rubs me the wrong way somehow. It's uh, that quote that God won't put on you more than you can handle kind of thing, right? It's one of the ones, um, I never liked that expression. I had an aunt that used it all the time, one of my aunts from um, up in Quincy. And she'd say, there but for the grace of God, go I. There but for the grace of God. And it'd be some poor unfortunate soul, you know, that was suffering. And, and so I never liked that because it seemed like God must be withholding God's grace from that person. Um, and, but we're the lucky ones, kind of, you know. And so um, this week in our Bible study, uh, one of our uh, parishioners that was zooming in uh, from St. Louis said, you know, I, I never liked that expression, the line in the Our Father that says, lead us not into temptation, we ask God. Lead us not into temptation. Like God would lead us into temptation, I guess to test us, you know, would be the theory. God would lead us into temptation. And of course, in the, in the Gospels, it, it's the other Our Father that we use, but no one knows it, so we, we don't tend to use it. And the expression is instead, save us from the time of trial. Right? Save us from the time of trial rather than don't put, us, don't put more stuff on us, you know. Um, and so that, that, um, that works for me. I don't, I, wouldn't, uh, I don't believe in a God that would put things on us until the breaking point, right? Until the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing. Oh, that was one last thing. I, you know, couldn't take it after that. Um, so I don't like that expression. Uh, but then last night it kind of came to me that um, it reminded me of the uh, kind of a compilation of the first few steps of 12-step recovery, right? And so just to kind of summarize, uh, so it's because um, God would give us the strength to endure, right? So the first three steps, we admit that we are powerless. When our, our colleague talked about that, the colleague, our opening prayer, that we are, we, we're powerless. Without God, we're powerless. Um, so we admit we're powerless is this first step. And then we come to believe a power greater than us can restore us, right? A higher power, whatever experience that is for, for people. Uh, the word God isn't enough to, um, to name that experience. Um, I am, uh, right? God says I am who I am um, in our first reading from Exodus. Um, so a power greater than us can restore us. Um, and then we make a decision to turn our lives over to the care of God. Again, whatever our understanding of God is, turn our lives over to a higher power. That just like this reading says, that God will provide a way out, right? Uh, will rescue us, an escape route. Um, and also importantly, the strength, the strength to endure. Uh, so that maybe you appreciate this passage a little more. The rest of it is a little um, as often with Paul uh, some confusing combination of images. And certainly it's known that Pontius Pilate was cruel. There were a lot of things going on um, with this, but um, in, the, in the gospel reading too. But yeah, so that, that works for me rather than um, uh, lead us not into temptation. What a great passage this Exodus passage is. Of course, and we had to bring out our, our, our fabulous Torah reader a bill for that one so he could be uh, the voice of God. And he said at the beginning, I heard him in the back, you'll, you'll probably hear it on Facebook uh, recording later. He said, I'm the voice of God today. I said, I thought that was my job. Wait a minute, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but what a rich story. I know um, in our Bible study, um, uh, people probably want me saying Marshall said this is like, like a foundational passage for him in his faith journey. Um, uh, Jan too, that was dialing in from St. Louis, uh, talked about, the, you know, the, 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 just the message from God, I am, you know, I am, I, I exist, I, I'm here, I am. Um, and so, all these, so I've just had, a, you know, I, I used to go to a lot of um, Bible studies, of course, over many years. One is the, um, it's a, I think it came out of Africa, where you just keep reading the passage and notice what words jump out at you. And even within a five-minute difference of reading it, different words will kind of jump out at you. So I just underlined, it seems like every five lines there's a major message here. 
uh, in this reading from Exodus chapter three, it is, uh, and so it says Moses was keeping the flock, right? Moses a shepherd, um, uh, Shepherd is a wonderful ancient symbol for leadership, a proper leadership, stewardship, protection, rather than dominance, um, bossing people around, shepherding, and then went up to Horeb, which is also scholars say is Mount Sinai, um, the holy mountain, right? We had the 10 commandments, a decalogue at the beginning, 10 commandments were given on Mount Horeb, on Mount Sinai. Uh, it has the, the bush, the miracle of the bush was blazing, yet was not consumed. It reminds me, you know, when I, if I text, uh, this image came to mind too, it's funny. If I text and write the word fire or fireplace, there's an image of flames that pops up. What are those things, are they emojis or whatever? I don't know what you call those things, you know, little symbol. And every time I see it, I think of the burning bush because, you know, every time I've looked at a, a, a Bible that has illustrations, it's, you know, so all these flames, pointy flames jumping out of this bush, again, blazing but not consumed a miraculous image for, for God, you know, God, um, uh, crea crea God the creator, yet uncreated, right? Eternal God, everlasting, again, uh, e uncreated creator. And then uh, um, this, a few lines down, it talks about, I've heard their cry, God says, I've heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I've come down to deliver them. And so God knows, you know, Jesus, um, in God incarnate, come down to share our suffering even, to share our joys, our celebrations, and our pain and suffering. Didn't, lot, didn't let pain or death or suffering be the end of the story, but rather new life and resurrection. Um, a God that cares, experiences, hears our cries in the courts of heaven, um, and cares about justice cares about the suffering of God's people and will intervene as God promised forever, right? And so then Moses, of course, um, who am I to do this? I, I, can't, I can't do this, you know, just as many prophets. I, can't, I don't have the words to say this. I'm just a boy or I'm just a child. I'm just a, a young woman. I can't carry this message for God. Um, and so the line, God says, I will be with you. Right, so if with God's presence, God's loving presence, again, the mission of our parish, that God's loving presence would be known in people's lives and our community, that that's, that's all we need to do these, these things. Um, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. Right, I am who I am. In the, in the Jewish tradition, the unnameable one, right, the, the holy one, you, you can't put a name on God. I am who I am. Lucy said, I love every time that's a Popeye. Popeye used to say that. <laughs> so I love, I am who I am. I tend to say, I fall on that sometimes, uh, which is not a ex good excuse. You know, I am who I am. You know, so like take it or leave it. That, that's not quite good enough, isn't it? No, especially during Lent. Especially during Lent. It's like, no, no. Um, yeah, so so much, right? So much here. Worth taking home this one and, and looking at it more. I think, you know, Lent is a time to consider what is our relationship with God? You know, if we, if we consider maybe we would turn to a higher power, I think that's it's harder for in, in a contemporary culture, people think that they're the higher power, you know, uh, rather, you know, they're, they're the fruit, as it, you know, my rector used to say in Boston at Trinity Copley Square, of course, you know, in that church, they turn all the lights down, the spot, the only light would be on this one, the spotlight would be down, you know, climb way up in the gilded church and you know, uh, the beautifully carved pulpit. Um, and he would say, you know, we, you know, without, that God is the vine and we're the branches. And we're not the fruit. And without the, uh, connecting to the vine, we can do nothing. And he would put, he'd be like, a, you know, a grapevine. He'd stand like a grapevine as he said this. Without being connected to the vine, to God, we can't produce the fruit. We're not the end product. We're not the fruit. We're the means for the fruit to be produced. We're the branches. God is the vine that we'd be connected to. So it's time to, I guess, during Lent, we could consider what is our relationship with God? How do we perceive of this higher power, if we can perceive of that? Uh, and, um, and we could consider, right, do we consider God a taskmaster, like the pharaohs? Do we consider God to be the vengeful, vengeful judge waiting for us to trip up? Oh, gotcha, right? People, people love to play gotcha. You know, 
um, I'm sure you've experienced that in your own lives. I can't believe that you let that, uh, whatever, you said the wrong thing or did, uh, gotcha. Uh, do we think that about God? Um, or do we think of God as the ground of our being, right? I am. The being that transcends creation, the creator that transcends uh, time, um, the deliverer, the ground of our being, right? Deliverer, rescuer. Uh, so that's worth considering if you choose to do your homework uh, this week. I think it was a couple months ago already that um, one of our teenagers, Maria, came to me and said, you know, this year Mr. Rogers' birthday is on a Sunday. Would it be appropriate for us to celebrate that? Um, and, and certainly it is. <laughs> and you'll see it will be when, the, when our young people come up and sing in a few minutes. We have our icon, of course, of Mr. Rogers over here in the corner. That's where Mr. Rogers would, would sit. I know Mr. Rogers was so humble that uh, Connie said she shook his hand for you know, years, I think, before she realized it was Mr. Rogers. And uh, so she said, when am I going to meet Mr. Rogers? And Connie's husband said, you just shook his hand at the piece. And um, modest, right, humble, wonderful man. So much to uh, celebrate there, right, that he continues, uh, again, his, um, as I wrote yesterday in my update, his gentle wisdom um, goes forward, I think, to maybe even to folks that haven't even really watched his show. I, I was a little old when his show came out. You can see I'm old. But yet, the ones I've seen, I, I love it. his show, is amazing. Um, I love the one when people wouldn't let African-American people swim in their swimming pools. He brought an African-American man on, and they put the swimming pool in front of him, and they washed their feet. Right? They put their feet in it um, together. Amazing, right? And then Joe just told me this week that Mr. Rogers composed all his own music. Right, not just the words, the, the lyrics, uh, all the music, um, what a, a genius, uh, incredible. And so, yeah, so as our psalm points out today, we, that our, my mouth praises with joyful lips, right? Not uh, quivering, fearful lips, we praise God. That, because under the shadow of God's wings, right, the mother bird protecting us, under the shadow of God's wings, we rejoice. So even uh, during Lent, we rejoice in Mr. Rogers and his legacy. We, we as a parish are committed to bringing that forward in, in many ways. We'll see how that plays out in our lives. And I think, you know, just like, um, just like if St. Patrick's Day falls on Friday, I think the special dispensation for another denomination that they can have corned beef, who would guess, on a Friday in Lent. And even St. Joseph's Day yesterday, even though it's Lent for my Italian-American friends, that didn't hold them back. <laughs> from celebrating St. Joseph's Day. That's probably why there's so few in church today. They're recovering from St. Patrick's and St. Joseph's Day. <laughs> Much to celebrate. So yeah, so today's the spring equinox. I've got nothing much to say about that, except that it's a nice coincidence that we have this image of the fig tree um, at, uh, on the spring equinox. So I, I like gardening images of Jesus anyways. You know, Jesus used those gardening images so um, us peasant people could understand what he was talking about rather than some highfalutin theology. And so, yeah, so um, this whole idea, you know, I'm, I talked about this week at Bible study, I guess, that I'm not the one, I'm not good at pruning. You know, I, I think if the weed flowers, uh, then let it, let it be, you know. And, um, and so, and I, I never liked pruning rose bushes, that's why we ended up digging up our rose bushes finally in Delaware because every time I cut them, it, I felt like I was making them bleed or something, you know? It was like, ah, it's painful for me. And so, but yet they wanted to be pruned. And um, so, yeah, so this whole idea of, um, well, there's no fruit. Again, just like my rector in Boston used to say that we have, we're to produce the fruit, you know, um, the good fruit that'll last, right? I love that, that image. And so, well, it's not producing fruit this year. We'll give it another year, put some manure on it, you know, nurture it. And so I love this idea of, um, and that's, uh, in this one, I guess it seems like the gardener is God, right? The gardener, it shows God is patient with us. Um, we're not, you know, we're not expected to be, all of a sudden, the lightning strikes and we're, oh, now our, our faith is perfect, we're, we're done, you know. Rather, we're on a journey, right? We're on a journey of our faith, and that journey is um, uh, unlike this island. Um, it's more like Block Island. It's hilly, right? It's a hilly journey. 
uh, with um, rocks on the side of the road that you could crash into on your bicycle if you weren't careful. And, um, but yet we keep going and God is, we have the presence of God for our strength in that. God is patient with us, knowing that it's um, really probably until the veil is lifted in the next life that we won't actually get it. And, um, but our prayer book, um, I must have one here, my collection. And uh, I've got my, got my old prayer book. And so our Book of Common Prayer is one of those uh, books that counts on God's patience that we believe our prayers are formative, right? We have prayers for morning, noontime, evening. Uh, you know, we have Compline that Isla and I prayed for so many, you know, week, night after night up in the attic. Um, those, those are formative. And so it doesn't talk us into anything. It just helps uh, strengthen us, form us, inspire us, um, instruct us. And so, our prayer, again, our prayer book is just a combination of images from the Old Testament and New Testament, right? The Hebrew Scripture and our, and our, and our Testament, our, our epistles and gospels and letters, uh, book of Revelation, it's all in here, incorporated into prayer. Now we feel that our worship services, our prayer life, our service in the community together, just, just our fellowship, our being together, right? That, that word fellowship, that churchy word, is formative. It helps strengthen us and form us in our faith. And so uh, we thank God for God's patience. We ourselves need to have patience on our journey as things unfold in our lives and our understandings our, through our experiences of God's presence and the challenges of life, overcoming those because of the great I am being with us. Um, yeah, so we try to have that patience that God has with us and our patience with each other in the wider community. And so I guess that's enough uh, to ask for one day. So if you choose this week, think yourself, um, what is your relationship with God? What is the image of God that gives you that strength, that assurance of God's loving presence uh, in your life? And with, with that presence, of course, um, nothing is impossible. Yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.